Hello everyone. I know it's been a little while since I've made my last video, uh, but yeah, life happens. Today I'm going to be talking about a terrible lesson that I learned the hard way by making a huge mistake. And I'd like to thank a wonderfully generous community member, Shikul, whose channels I've posted in the description below. And he pointed me in the direction of this functionality within System D. So System D is an init system that is used by most of the major Linux distributions like Ubuntu and all its derivatives, Fedora, Debian, Arch, OpenSUSE, and so forth. It's the first program that your computer starts when you boot it up, and it subsequently is responsible for loading everything else, like your services, your desktop environment, your login manager, etc. Now I'm not going to go into system D in detail here, nor am I going to be debating the merits of it over other choices. What I will acknowledge is that it is by far the most widely used in its system across all Linux distributions. So picture this. There I was applying a ton of updates to my Arco Linux system whilst watching some classic Star Trek Deep Space Nine episodes in the Kodi Media Player software. Somehow through some insane clumsiness, as I was quitting the Kodi program, I managed to accidentally hit the reboot option in its exit menu, whilst these system updates were still running in the background. Now, on most occasions you'll probably get away with accidentally rebooting your system during updates, as the update process should be smart enough to recover. However, in my case, I could only surmise that what went on to occur was a perfect storm of events, where I must have rebooted just as a new Linux kernel was being updated. The first reboot was fine, but when I tried to rerun updates, the system locked up and I had to hard power it off. That's when I got this dreaded error screen. So uh, I think that it means that I had no valid Linux kernel. Moral of the story is that there are occasions where you absolutely do not want your computer to have power related events which include things like shutdown, sleep, suspend, or hibernate. In my example, system updates would be one of those examples, but another could be if you were running backups or if you were running your system as some kind of media server. This is where the systemd inhibit function comes in handy. And I'll show you the man page here. Let's have a look at it. You can read most of it for yourself, but essentially if you run systemd inhibit, as part of your command, um, so you, what you would do is you put it before the command that you want to run in the, in the terminal. That opens the program that you intend to want to protect against computer power events. It will lock out the ability of these events to occur until your program finishes and exits. As you can see here, there are other options to system D inhibit, and you can be specific about which particular power event you want to protect your system against right here. In its simplest form, if you run systemd inhibit without any options, it will block all system power events in this list until your own program finishes and exits. Let's have a look at how this might work. If I bring up a terminal and we'll enlarge the font a little bit. So as a simple example, let's try running systemd inhibit and htop. So as you can see here, I've got htop running and everything looks normal. But look what happens if I try and open another terminal and I try to reboot the system. You'll see here it gives me a message that says the operation has been inhibited by uh, systemd inhibit. It says the reason is unknown and one of the options you can actually input here is the reasoning behind it. You can put your own little reason there. So now it won't let me reboot until I quit htop. There is still a way that this can be overridden if you attempt to reboot your system by elevating your privileges with sudo. So if I was to go sudo reboot and hit enter, my system would still reboot and override this systemd inhibit functionality. I'm not gonna do this right now, of course, since I'm recording this video. So you can see how useful this functionality can be for preventing clumsy folk like me from accidentally rebooting my system when doing something critical like running updates and potentially balking my system like I did. Now don't quote me on this, but I do recall some distributions uh, like Ubuntu, Debian, and other apt-based package manager distros 
where if you use the GUI interface for doing system updates, there is a similar functionality here. Now let's <clears throat> now let's quit out of this and we'll get out of HTOP as well. The next thing I did was to bake this functionality into my desktop so I wouldn't have to think about it too much whenever I tried to run system updates. And I did this by adding an alias to my bash RC file. So if I open up my bash RC file, so I would go nano.bash RC. And now if I scroll down to the bottom, which is where I think I put it, you'll see all these aliases. They're actually provided by the Arco Linux team and some of them are really useful. If I continue scrolling down, you'll see my own ones. So what I've done here is modify some of the aliases that Arco Linux already provides. And simply I just added system D inhibit uh, to the front of each of these commands. So most of the time, if I'm doing installs of the software from Pac-Man or if I'm updating my system, then it will cause my computer to avoid power events uh, until the process is actually finished. If you want more information about how to add alias shortcuts to your .bash RC file, I've made a video about that as well, and I'll link it in the cards above and in the description down below. That's all I've got for you today. Very simple one. If you want to stay informed of future content, consider subscribing to this channel. As always, if you have any other comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below for me, and I will have a look at them when time permits. Thank you again for watching, and bye-bye for now.